as you started your journey of uh, social entrepreneurship in uh, Norway, uh, and at times you must have surely felt that I need some qualified learning resources and they're not always readily available, you know, like, I mean, at least pioneers were still not available to you at that point of time. So uh, what strategy did you use as a person trying to establish himself in the tough word of social entrepreneurship? I say the word tough with uh, conscious selection because it is really a great demanding uh, activity that requires a lot of inner uh, absolute passion and conviction to do it. So, so what was your source of learning in the early stages of social entrepreneurship in Norway? Uh, that's a very good question, uh, mister. Uh, uh, social entrepreneurship is something that's not known uh, well in Norway. It's something new. Uh, that's that's what, what I think. And uh, the strategies we use is uh, to talk about to talk uh, with different uh, uh, companies, different uh, different um, uh, different uh, people, to just uh, to just get them what they think about uh, the social entrepreneurship journey, and that's the, the the biggest strategy we use just to talk to speak with people. How do we enter the database where we can find the database? And, and how, how we enter it. So, <clears throat> what you can see is the project website, which is this pioneerseu.no. And here in the menu of the website, you have the different sections. Um, one of the sections is the online digital database. So you just need to click on the online digital database and you will access, as I showed you before in my short presentation, this list of resources identified in the different countries. So you can search filter here if you select good practices. So you will see the 17 good practices, for instance, or 45 projects, or you can select by country maybe from 14 results are coming from Norway or language 30 from French and so on, okay? And if you click on any of these resources, you will find the title, the short description, and here the relevant thing is the link to the resource original one, of course, in this case in English or in the available languages. So you can navigate here also from one resource to another. So as I already said, you have uh, here, uh, I, I, we think this is a useful and relevant resource for everybody. So you can find a lot of uh, really interesting information. Uh, Viviana, as, as I kind of really uh, followed your story, I found that you do something that is really of tremendous value. You used, uh, and pardon me if my understanding was incomplete. I saw you kind of really suggest that learning about diversity, learning about different culture is a wonderful strategy to create a different kind of human energy. So, you know, like as an experienced uh, coach in the field of diversity, uh, would you like to kind of really share one strategic advice for somebody who's trying to kind of really be more efficient in dealing with diversity in their life? Thank you for the question. Or not. Yes, you, you, you got totally like what, what, what is our work. And I would say for me, it is like simple, but not so simple. I call my company Global Mindset Development. I, and I think the strategy is to try to develop a, a, a global mindset, a mindset that is open and curious, like genuinely curious. This is for me is, let's say, the best way for like managers, but for everyone to deal with diversity. So with this like learning approach and genuine curiosity, because you don't have to change if you don't want, but maybe what is out there is it can like enrich you. So this is what we want them to like experience. And this is also why we have developed like courses, but also I, I strongly believe it also in experiential learning. So I developed an activity that is called the Glocal Malta, so when people can go and meet foreigners and Maltese, we're bringing some amount of base of their international experience and cultural victim. So maybe coming from outside is actually good for your island, your country, your city. 
You gave me a wonderful mantra, Viviana, this morning. Uh, to be authentic, I think that's a wonderful message. Uh, I'm going to really have it on my desk up there to remind me every day to be more authentic. And I can really congratulate you on your wonderful work of change. And I've also kind of really followed your work a little bit virtually, and I've seen that you really create some wonderful experiential opportunities for different cultures to uh, connect, to collaborate, to learn from each other. And uh, to all our conference participants, I would strongly recommend do check out Viviana's uh, homepage that has got some wonderful stories for you to learn from. Thank you, Viviana. Yes, two minutes to comment something uh, in this case to Viviana, because uh, we, since you are working in the cultural competencies for businesses and supporting companies, uh, and this is, we are having this uh, conference in the frame of an Erasmus Plus project, I would like to share with you the results of a previous project that we coordinate in our institution in FODEF in Spain. Um, it's about intercultural competencies for to support work-based learning in companies in order to prevent prejudice from employers to uh, involve migrants and ethnic minorities in work-based learning. So since you are supporting those companies, this is a good example of uh, tools, practice, a European project like this. So I'm going to post the link to the uh, final products, okay? So feel free to use it the best way you can. Thank you so much. So Claire, I was kind of really feeling really nostalgic as you described Malta from my journey and you know, like those 30 minutes where you can kind of really go from one end to the other is a wonderful experience that I kind of really repeated a couple of times. Now, you know, like you talked something about mindset and I think that's a very uh, key word for me. Uh, when we talk about uncertainties that you're going to really highlight it uh, is my learning experience has been that the moment you are not very clear in dealing with uh, uncertainty it becomes a sense of fear that paralyzes and keeps you away from action but the moment you are kind of really proactive and you embrace the uncertainty the entire journey becomes an adventure. So you also talked about, you know, like this polarity of being in a nine to five administrative job and kind of really becoming a social entrepreneur. Can you please share any anecdotal uh, incident from your transformation from this uh, intrinsic fear that all of us feel at all point of times to becoming that fearless adventurer in the world of social entrepreneurship? It doesn't just happen overnight, that's for sure. Um, the, the mindset, uh, it, it's, uh, it's something that evolves. It's something that is, uh, I myself, I'm not a very methodological uh, person. So even though I can do a nine to five administrative job, make, write nice reports and fits within a job description, I did not find it very satisfying. So for me, it was uh, relatively easy. It's like uh, being who I really am because I'm following my passions, I'm following my dreams. And uh, in this day and age, why start a business to just start a business? You, you, you don't do that. I mean, it's the world is so competitive. There's so much things happening. We're... Uh, depleting the world's resources we have a lot of social challenges that we need to, to face so uh, doing something that solves a real problem and by a real problem it, it, it means that it taps into social quality of life it taps into the environment it gives me a sense of purpose and a sense of I don't care what challenges I will find today because I have a long-term vision I have a long-term mission and whatever I'm doing are steps to get me to that direction and they're all small incremental steps and yes uh, you plan and your plans change you have to be willing to live with uncertainty i mean of course being an entrepreneur means that at times you are also uh, challenged for resources so i uh, to 
I also need to make a living. I also need to earn an income. And that is a problem that a lot of social entrepreneurs find, you know, making ends meet for themselves while they're building their business. So even if I was offered a lot of opportunities of, uh, you know, full-time jobs, I did not take them. I chose only to work part-time so I could sustain myself while I build my business. And that helped me get to a certain level where I could stop my part-time work, which was earning me an income to pay the bills, you know, buy food, the basic necessities of life. And uh, we all <laughs> are human in the end of the day. So uh, um, I think the willingness and, and not being too proud to move back and forth from being an entrepreneur to being an employee, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing uh, somebody else's mission. There's not, nothing wrong with, with moving back and forth. It's not a sign of, of weakness. It's, it's uh, a journey. Life is a journey. And we all help each other out uh, along the way as, as best as we can. And um, I mean, this mindset, I think, is what has helped me beat the fear and be willing to change from one position to a, to another and find stability as, as an entrepreneur who can uh, not only sustain myself, but employ people and build a team to make things happen. Uh, if I may, I don't have any question, but I have a, a comment to share addressed to, to Claire. <laughs> um, it's, I spent two years in, uh, in Malta not so long ago so I personally realized that how traffic and transport in general is uh, impacting a lot on, uh, on the environment and on the population in general. So I strongly believe that a social enterprise like yours is, uh, can make a change and can, uh, can be re really effective on this, uh, on this impact. So thank you for what, mm -hmm. what you are doing. <laughs> Thank you, Laura, and thank you for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to network with uh, all these lovely people today. I want to really uh, acknowledge, uh, Rosie, uh, the dynamic energy uh, when you were speaking, you know, like it is going to really radiating out of the screen. Uh, and I also going to really have one uh, very uh, serious, you know, like curiosity. The story that you shared made me realize that, you know, like you bring a phenomenal entrepreneurial drive and also competence and experience uh, from uh, your past work. So when you kind of really re-established yourself in Ireland, there must have been an immediately perceived need to educate and transform the community that was accepting you. So, you know, like, I mean, uh, how did you deal with that challenge of how people looked at you? Did you kind of really use any special technique to forgive people for their ignorance? Did you kind of really have your own uh, emotional uh, secrets to kind of really uh, not let others reach out to you? And you said, okay, uh, we need to kind of really create a different communication and help them kind of really change their perspective of people like you. How did you deal with that? Oh, thank you so much, Raj. I would say, uh, yeah, it's been like, for me, it's been like being on a roller coaster. And um, uh, my life was, I would say, I was okay. I was happy at home and uh, things happened and I had to move and I moved alone without my kids. And it, wa it wasn't an easy journey, but because of having my children and knowing that um, the only thing that they got, I had to keep on moving. So uh, my first years in direct provision, I had a lot of like um, a mental challenges and I was experiencing depression and everything, you name them. And I said, I can't let this take hold of me. So I put myself in the community and I was lucky enough, I was accepted through a Syrian resettlement program as a volunteer. So there, all, there was one uh, gentleman in there who I was working with and he did everything as if nothing has happened in his life. So to me, he was like someone that I was looking up to to say, if this man can do like this, then I can also follow suit. 
And then from there, I was like, okay, the only thing I can do is just utilize any opportunity that is there for me to go and do and go to school. So I went into college and um, I found my peace in college. And then at the same time, I was like, okay, I'm here. If you don't accept me, that's your own problem. Those who accept me, let them accept me. And uh, also before that, when I just came in, I met this Irish woman who was taking me for Irish set dancing. I knew nothing about Irish set dancing, but it was a way of me just meeting people and just having the crack, like dancing and all that. And also through the Irish set dancing, there were people who didn't want to touch me because of my skin. And uh, this lady, she actually told me like, Rose, you're in this country, they are good people and they are bad people. So if you meet good people, don't think everyone is gonna be good to you. And if you meet bad people, don't think everyone is gonna be bad to you. So that's something that has always been in my head. Like if I meet someone who is nasty to me, I know there's someone who's gonna be good to me after that. And um, I, as I was going to college, I was doing a degree in community development and I had no opportunity to do work placement. So I set up a group for uh, people in the asylum system to be doing integration events. And that's when I started seeing that, okay, people have talent. I'm not the only one who is talented, who has the skill and is not able to use the skill. So how can I support these people with their talent to bring it out in the community? And yeah, I think things just happen. Like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I just, I just call it it's like a journey and whether you like it or not you have to go through that journey so last year 2019 i saw an um uh, an advert from the social entrepreneur island that says uh if you have an idea don't put it to waste so i applied with them and i was just doing it because i had nothing much to do so for me it was like okay let me just do something so that i can be out of this direct provision because i hated just sleeping around and just doing nothing just sleeping and eating sleeping and nothing so when i joined this social entrepreneur i was like i was so happy because um they didn't ask me, why are you in this country? Because that's a question most of the time you're asked. Why are you here? But for them, they took me as who I am and they looked at my abilities. And I went through their program and I made it to the final and then they gave us seed funding and that's how we started Dignity Partnership. So basically to answer you in short, for me, I just look for any opportunity. If I am accepted, that's good. Thank you for accepting me. If you don't accept, if you don't believe in what I'm doing, it's fine. Someone else will do. So, <laughs> sorry for going around and around. <laughs> but, you know, like I've been listening to four wonderful uh, social entrepreneurs today, uh, Viviana, Mohammed, Claire, and Rosie. Uh, is great that you're on a wonderful journey. And I like the pace that each one of you has set. And in that word pace, I see a wonderful mantra for myself. I see that each one of you is passionate, authentic, creative, and entrepreneurial. So that's the combination of pace that I see in each one of you. And I wish you a wonderful pace going ahead on your entrepreneurial journey. Thank you for sharing that story. I've learned a lot from you and I've been truly inspired. Keep the pace up. Yeah, sorry, it's not me, but uh, Jesus Boyano from InfoDev, which is the director, he, he will be in charge of this part, okay? Okay, no worries. Thank you, Federico. So yeah, it's uh, time to just uh, speak some words about our project and this journey that we have uh, uh, experienced during the last two years implementing the project. I, I will say that uh, this final conference is a summary uh, of the very core of the project, which is social entrepreneurship. Uh, it's, it's what we share in terms of uh, intention and the, the purpose of uh, bringing value to society and also to make a way of living of it. So make a change in society and make a way of living. Um, so what we intend with this project was to uh, answer a question, what can be done 
uh, through the vocational education and training to support social entrepreneurship. So the answer in our case was to identify some, something innovative uh, in order to, to push forward social entrepreneurship in Europe through BET. And uh, service learning was the answer to this innovation. Service learning, which is the uh, type of programs in which students participate in some volunteering activities in the communities, can be NGOs, can be the local governments, something in connection with the society and the reality and the needs in society. So the approach of the project was to train those people who are either in the vet system or in the NGOs or in this uh, organization of the society to help students to identify opportunities for social entrepreneurship while they are participating in these volunteering activities. So it's there where the possibilities are rising. In your case, and that's a lovely experience that you have shared with us, you are now in the process. Uh, and so we really hope you a very successful future. You already have a successful situation now. Uh, so we just encourage to other organizations in Europe to take advantage of the best systems of the service learning to encourage this type of experiences. Because uh, we also think that uh, these small uh, actions that we carry out really make a, a, a change in our society. So we contribute the way we have at local level, a regional level to make these changes. And this project is an example of some uh, elements that can support this process to the best system. So I, I will say that um, the experience of uh, interculturality, as you have mentioned for your own personal situations, also apply to the organizations and the international cooperation through European projects to implement uh, this type of innovation in education share experience from different countries, different organizations with different prof profiles, applying in different contexts, but in the end, providing solutions that can be similar to each other. Um, so uh, this cooperation will all be, be possible with uh, programs like Erasmus Plus program, of course. Uh, otherwise, it would be very challenging, this collaboration between different organizations in Europe. So uh, I would say this is a very successful project in that way with materials that we have refined and co-create and co-design in order to provide something useful for, for educators and, and training organizations. So we also encourage you to spread the war and the, disseminate the results of our project because they are really useful. Uh, and I will just yes, finish with, uh, giving thanks to all our partners for their commitment and hard work during the project implementation and especially to Mia for the brilliant and excellent coordination of this very successful project. So once again, thank you very much.